Hey guys, I'm doing a quick test, so I thought I'd just make a video about it. I'm testing the Sky Diamond Dyneema webbing, which so it's very, very low stretch, in a bowlin. And you can examine my bowlin here. I'm sure there's so many varieties and I'm calling it the wrong one. But anyways, bowlin nonetheless. I have it here in the slack sand machine, but that's not the cool part. Really what I'm doing this test for, this is just something I need to test, is I finally have my 10,000 hertz load star load cell and so i'm going to kind of show you the break and we'll talk about the bolins and then i'm going to show you the graph we get it's all pretty cool so check this out so this is with no tension you can evaluate my knot tying skills i'm sure i'll increase them later when i am not trying to build drop towers but anyways this has a sewing loop on this side we'll find out if a knot is weaker spoiler alert it probably is and this is my new load cell. It looks like my other lab jack one. And this cable, again, goes into this interface box here, which is the, the high speed one, 10,000 Hertz. It's uh, way too fast for anything like what we're doing right now, but it's for the drop tower. So I'm playing with it and it sends electricity or signal there, reads the excitation or the electricity coming back and spits it out into the software. And so we've got our calibration and our ID and stuff. We're gonna do 12 seconds at a thousand Hertz because we just don't need that much data. And that's what I'm going to log it as. We're gonna get our chart and our peak force of our last little test. So let's get started. Okay, so that was a super cool result. It tore it. This is a different result than I've gotten in the past. Pretty neat how that happened. And then what we got here is this fancy chart. And you can see we uh, already had a little pretension on there before we started. And it peaked out at 11.18, but it was tearing and then it peaked out there. That's pretty cool. Drops, goes to zero. What's super cool, like the big picture here, is the fact that we can really zoom in and find out how long these peak forces last, especially when we're doing static drops or dynamic drops where it's just a real quick peak load and find out where the peak load is when things are breaking. I have broken like 2000 th things with crane scales and really miss a lot of the information that's inside of a chart. I have one more side over here. What I could do is pull it to four kilonewtons, maybe uh, four or five and see how hard it is to untie because that is really the question at hand, which knot is safe enough and easy enough to untie if it were to get loaded. Backup high lines or backups on high lines almost never get loaded. So as long as they're super safe enough, however, 11.18 doesn't seem very strong. This was requested by Zizek or Greg when I uh, was with him on La Portum project in Sweden. This is a piece of the backup extender on the world record project. So this is what the world record was rigged on from Spider Slacklines, Sky Diamond. Pretty cool that I got to have a piece in order to break test it. Let's pull that to four or five kilonewtons and then we'll find out how to harness and untie. Now it's a hundred degrees out here, but I figured I could at least show you how to tie the knot. I'm trying to be quick about this. So this is overhand. And what you do is you invert this and you flip it over itself like that. And then you take this part of it and you pull it until it looks like a bowl in. So this is knot advice. I'm not good at tying knots. I literally just learned this. So if I'm wrong, read the comments. You'll find out real fast if I am or not. Let's uh, pull this to four kilonewtons. Okay, so we got to 4.9 kilonewtons and you can see that we're a little wonky looking. Let me pull this side off. This side stayed a little bit cleaner, except it really pinches it inside of there. That's probably why it's tearing. But, <laughs> that's not normal to be able to untie. I mean, this is a very slippery webbing, but very, very easy to untie. Too bad it's like super unsafe. This is an interesting thought. See how loose that is? This is uh, this strand here. 
So it doesn't pull evenly, right? Because it's pulling this load strand and it was the inside strand. So the part we pulled was the inside here and had a tighter bend radius. Um, I'm sure there's so many varieties we can do, but when I'm trying to be quick because it's hot out here, that's all you're gonna get. So now let's pull this to destruction. So this is super interesting. I need to back it off and see what happened before we tear it. Okay, this is another interesting thing. 17.35 kilonewtons and we did not break it. And this is the eight kilonewton line here, but it had the weirdest spikes. Let's evaluate why and what happened. And okay, so I untied this. I'm super curious why that happened, how we got to such high peak forces. I don't really know. It's super scrunched. I'm going to retie this. It's probably compromised, but I think that's even more of an interesting test when things are not perfect. Sometimes you have reused a spot on the same webbing for a while and it kind of looks like this. So, wow, this is super hot, like super, super, super hot. And tore the edging up there. This knot is, it squeezed the carabiner, so that's interesting. It also did it on this side as well. This is a very slippery webbing. S super interesting, okay. And our number is, uh, yeah, 15.25. And you can kind of see how the, the graph goes. So I'll put um, a thing on the computer that shields the reflection and we'll try to put the graph in the brake test. So a lot of improvements are gonna happen here, but we can just kind of nerd out on it and appreciate what we have so far. Maybe, um, let's see here, I have enough webbing here that I could put this in a weblock and find out how strong the actual webbing is in a sewing loop. And then we'll call that good. Okay, so we have the sewing loop here double wrapped this web lock. You can see it's 17 millimeters, so it doesn't quite fit in um, a one inch wide web lock or a 25 millimeter inside diameter web lock. But I double wrapped it because it would slip otherwise. Uh, this might even also slip, but let's find out what this breaks at. Now it did want to shift as we saw, but it started to tear before that in the back of the web lock, like it usually does. So it kind of tore laterally and not just across the webbing like that. And that's the old test. You can see how we still have a, some strands sitting here. And this is, I believe, Dyneema. I think the whole thing is Dyneema. So super neat materials here. And with a sew and loop into a web lock, the sew and loop was stronger, which is shocking. 20.5 kilonewtons. You can see it progressively went up, 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 and then starts to do different things. And we're gonna learn all about that so I sound smarter in the future. But anyways, I'm excited about this.